Hi, everybody. Welcome to What's New Wednesday with Allison. How you doing? How you doing in this coronavirus time? You know, I saw a 2020. Somebody did like a little logo and there was the 2020 with looking like the finger, giving it the finger. So that's how we all feel about 2020. Uh, but, you know, in spite of all of that, we are keep on keeping on and we're going to be doing and going and making and booming and bombing and keep on. That's all. So with What's New Wednesday today, I have a guest, Colin O'Neill, and he actually runs the 2020 Power Users Group on a uh, Facebook group, which is a great group for anybody who uses 2020 and needs design ideas, like like quirks, how to how to manipulate this, how to manipulate that. Um, there's so much to 2020, and it's great that Colin has this group with people uh, interacting and asking questions and showing things. And he also has a um, a website where he offers training uh, for um, the 2020 design and e-design platform and all other kind of stuff because the technology and the rendering it, and and um, the whole the whole rendering business with this e-design and the and the computer platform and the intertwining of of all the different platforms it's really just amazing to see what's happening in the field. Um, so excited to see Kat Colin here. Somebody says, yay. I can't see who it is because I'm looking through my, um, my BeLive TV. I'd have to go here and see who it is. But what I wanted to talk about today was, oh, here, look, we have, hello, hello. I got a Ryan here, Nazia. Hello. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, we'll get more people coming on. Uh, what I wanted to talk about just quickly before I get into my interview with Colin was, did you all get this new kitchen and bath magazine, kitchen and bath business magazine? We all, if you're a kitchen and bath designer and you belong to the National Kitchen Bath Association, you should be getting this magazine. And um, I know one of uh, the members of a couple of groups on Facebook, a Facebook person, very popular. She has a kitchen in here somewhere. I didn't mark it. But what I wanted to talk about, with, isn't this interesting? This is the Reader's Choice Awards. And I'm just going to tell you a few of the Reader's Choice Awards on what are the best products. Like we've got cooking appliances, kitchen flooring, kitchen countertops, kitchen sinks, shower systems, bath ventilation. So this is basically, if you can get this copy, this lets you know of what are the popular um, things. For instance, refrigeration, the top four appliances are GE, KitchenAid, LG, and Sub-Zero. Then for your kitchen cabinets, we have <sighs> Ikea, sorry, Ikea, a uh, craft made, Omega, Pogum Pole, which is a European brand, Wellborn cabinetry, and Wood Mode Fine Custom Cabinetry. So, oh, look, I have the, the people coming on. I could see the names over here. Okay, they're constantly working on this Facebook and Be Live stuff. So then uh, kitchen, uh, bathroom cabinets and vanities, we are having Doravit, Fairmont Designs, James Martin Vanities, Kohler, Lenova, and Wood Mode Fine Custom Cabinetry. For our kitchen flooring, we have Armstrong Flooring, Artistic Tile, Dal Tile and Walter Zanger. For our kitchen countertops, let's see what is the tops. Caesar Stone, Cambria, Decton by Constantino, which Dex Decton is the porcelain material, DuPont Corian, and Silestone. So these are just some of the things that are in this um, 
kitchen and bath business magazine this month. Uh, I think it's important to just open these up and take a skim through, not always reading everything on the internet, but having something physical to look at and touch and feel and smell. <laughs> so anyway, without further ado, I'm bringing on Colin. I'm really excited. We've been in touch over the year and um, a little bit here, a little bit there. And I'm embracing all of the education happening right now in the kitchen and bath industry, not just from NKBA, National Kitchen and Bath Association, but from fellow designers who see that there is a need for continuing education, for advanced, beginner. We need education, people. Knowledge is power. Okay, I'm going to bring Colin on now. And let me just unmute him and bring him in. Did I shut? There he is. Hey, Allison. Hey, hey Colin. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Good. Is that a kitchen you designed behind you in 2020? Well, I didn't technically design it. Okay. It was um, a winner in the NKBA professional design competition last year. And oh. 2020 was the sponsor. So what they did was they had us take the fully designed and photographed kitchens and then re-render them in 2020 to be able to show the realism that you can get from 2020. So, so yeah, I can't take credit for the kitchen, but I can take credit for the rendering. It's amazing having been a 2020 user for over 20 years to see the advancements in the rendering is just really incredible. It is amazing. They, you know, they, they've worked on that pretty constantly for the last uh, 10 years or so, uh, being able to, to bring in custom textures, being able to bring in custom shapes in the form of SketchUp shapes. So they've really, uh, you know, elevated it to a new level where you can show, you know, pretty, pretty close to, to realism, um, what somebody's looking for. And uh, so, you know, it's something that uh, I, I started using, um, you know, 20, almost 23 years ago now. And um, I'm, I'm a kitchen designer because of 2020, by the way, literally. Because of 2020. Because of 2020. Yeah. Not a kitchen designer and then a 2020 user, but the opposite way. Correct. How did yeah. that happen? So um, I was in the computer industry. And I was in um, tech support. And then I also had some uh, a couple of clients that I had met along the way. And one of them was a general contractor. And he had me set up like little networks for him, things like that, install his software. And he called me up one day and he said, I have this new software that is for designing kitchens. I'm opening a kitchen and bath showroom. He had always been like siding windows, additions, things like that. And he said, uh, can you come install it for me? So I said, sure. So I, I, I installed it for him and he's like, play around with it. And I started playing around with it. And I'm like, this is really cool. He said, he said, you know, he said, I need a designer and I'd, I'd really like you to come work for me. And uh, he said, I'll teach you the design end. Uh, although I did have some lumberyard experience back in the late eighties doing just simple, you know, builder kitchens, L-shaped kitchens, nothing major, you know, on graph paper. But, um, and, you know, he said, I'll teach you the design end. He was a brilliant, not was, is a brilliant designer and um, also a vocational teacher uh, of carpentry in the local vocational high school. That's so um, so he's, he's a teacher. So I went to work for a teacher. So that was invaluable way to start the, in the industry. So I may have started because of the design software, but I stayed because of the creativity. And, and I really was able to learn an awful lot in the three plus years that I, I worked for him. And, um, you know, that's, that's a great way to start in this industry for sure is in a design build type situation where you're constantly just immersed in the construction process. That's what, well, I got involved in the kitchen business by a fluke as well. Having a degree in interior design, there were no interior design project, uh, jobs in the 90s when I graduated and um because it was like guess what a recession <laughs> so I went saw a sign in Home Depot 
it's a kitchen designer and I wanted a new new part. I just wanted a new part time job. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I could learn that. I'll learn that. And here I am. How many years? Le decades later. Yeah. And that, decades. Was, that was when I understand their training was much better back then, too. Home Depot. But really what they did was they was like, here's the here's the kit. You want to be in the kitchen department? Here you go. Right. So I learned 2020 just from sitting down and having to learn it. Right. And those computers were linked to a, a, a larger network. So you were limited on what you could do with 2020. And certainly we didn't have the capabilities today with all of the rendering and whatnot that you could do with 2020. Right. Back then it was just, you know, black and white and line drawings, mm -hmm. but um, it was a fabulous way to learn. And also they did a lot of training with the NKBA. They did right. a lot of um, NKBA seminars. We had beginners kitchens, beginners bathrooms. So Home Depot really supported the National Kitchen and Bath Association. Yeah, yeah. And, and they we went to all of the meetings and um, there was a lot of, of, of education with product knowledge classes, stuff that you can do virtually now. However, we would have a whole day of it. Right. We would be immersed in like a whole day of Whirlpool, a whole sure. day of GE. Right. So the education back then was was great. And that was then and this is now. And one of the reasons that I started my um, group and my teaching and coaching is because I felt that there was nowhere for designers or people to really learn about kitchen and bath design without right. having to go to school or like a university or through National Kitchen and Bath Association. So I saw a void. Right. And then I came across your group. And, you know, one of the things, there's one tip that you gave that it blew my mind and a lot of other designers. And I use it all the time. And every time I think of, of you. Oh, and it is how to do the backsplashes okay. with the surface tool and how to import the uh, seamless tie seamless um, textures. Right. So I was blown away. And I know even one of my friends, Mary, she was like, I've had been doing 2020 for how many years? I never knew that's how you do it. So you've got some great um tips and and uh useful things thank you so um tell me a little bit about how you got started with your 2020 power users group and your kitchen uh design academy that you have yeah so um one of the things that that i had noticed was there wasn't really a good spot for people to just go exchange ideas about 2020. uh for many years i had belonged to a um what's called a delphi forum um, that was started by, um, or was run by a gentleman named Kevin Roberts, who's a, a catalog, 2020 catalog creator out of, uh, out of Canada. And it was a spot where people could go in and ask questions and have them answered. There were a few gurus in there. Um, I was kind of a middle, middle management guru, you could say, um, that I would go in and answer some questions. And I noticed that it, that it petered off over the years. There weren't very many people using it any longer. And I realized that the format of a forum which started back before, when the internet was young, people weren't using them anymore and it, they weren't very user friendly. So I went looking on Facebook, which is where most people hang out, you know, and, and I went looking for something on 2020 and I couldn't believe that there was literally nothing. Um, 2020 themselves didn't even have a users group on Facebook. So I just, it's easy enough to start a Facebook group. I just right. started a Facebook group and I went to Kevin and I said, Hey, can I, can I invite the folks in the forum there? He's like, yeah, sure. No problem. So the first seven, eight people were from the, were from the forum. The next six or eight people were people that I knew that I said, Hey, I started this, 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 uh, this group closed group to discuss 2020 things. And, um, and it just started growing from there. So that was July of 2018. And, uh, by the end of that year, I think I had 80 something, 80 something members, Mm -hmm. And um, it just kept growing. So probably mid-year last year, 2020 um, noticed a couple of people that worked at 2020 joined the group. And um, I ended up going to a local um, event here in the Boston area, uh, met the CEO, met 
Santiago, who's the, the product manager, um, Mark, who's the, the cloud content manager and, and just started communicating with them. And, and they were like, we really like what you're doing with the group. And, you know, we were going to start our own at some point, but you know, we'll just let people go to yours. So as a result, their trainers reference the group in their, in their training when they have training, all, all the physical training, of course, is, is not happening right now, but, right, but right. they are doing some virtual training. So they, they mention the group and, and, uh, and folks just come in and, you know, they enjoy the, the camaraderie and, you know, the fact that we all, we all share our, our, um, our, you know, our knowledge, a couple of the gurus that were from that Delphi forum are there, a gentleman named Bill Zielinski, um, uh, was out of Pennsylvania, a gentleman named Mike Langenseepen, who's out of Australia. Uh, and they, they come in and, and share their wisdom and they're very generous with their, with their knowledge as are a number of other people. So it's, it's been a great, it's been a great, uh, Great time. We're a little over 1600 members now. Um, wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. People just keep finding it and keep referring other people. And, uh, and, you know, we just, we just, you know, we have a, um, we have a, a photo album of textures in there with some seamless textures that folks can just go in and download and use. Um, and, uh, you know, try and do some uh, live things, but time is, time is difficult, you know, to, 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 figure out time things, but... time is time is it's like finding the time there's right. not enough time in the day there's too much time in the day right. <laughs> it depends on the day you can't create time so no uh, so i know fun. when i started my group it was just like i don't know i'm gonna start a group what are you gonna call it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i have a lot a lot of knowledge and i just you know want to share that with people and um, and I love how people can ask a question in the groups, right. they ask a question and all these people chime in and give suggestions and give answers. So if you have a, like a design problem or in your case, a 2020 glitch problem or whatever, you just can go into these groups. So it's much more personal, even though like you have 1600, I have like 2100, uh, don't ask me where they all keep coming from, but they right. are, and they're legitimate people, designers, cabinet people. Uh, it's like, you know, I guess I built it and they did come, right. <laughs> but I love how um, you can ask questions in the group. So when you want to ask something particular to 2020, like, where do you go? Like, how do I do the backsplash or how do I stack molding or how do I make this corner fit that, you know, it's whatever. There's so much to know. Not everything, everyone can know one the most. Right. Everybody need, everybody knows a little bit of something and we all work together. And that's what I find so interesting about the internet is like, even though we're disconnected, we all really want to connect with other people and like-minded people. And there's a lot of connection going on, even though there's this social media disconnect. Right. Makes right. sense? Yeah, it does. And I think that, you know, the, um, I was just having a conversation earlier, you know, right now, the way things are, I would rather have a, a Zoom call with somebody because uh, I can see their whole face where if we're together in a room, which, you know, we're, we're allowing now. And I think that if we're, if we're careful, we can do that you know, in a showroom setting or what have you, if you're, you know, just being careful about that, but yeah. I'd still rather do a zoom call because you can see people's react, you can see people's facial expressions. And I think that's, that's very important. So I think the, the, the online, the online experience to me right now is preferable than an in-person experience. Um, and, and the, a place like, uh, you know, the Facebook groups is a great place to do that. I have um, a que somebody, Ryan here, she says, I'm so lucky to have found you both over the last six months or so as I'm starting up my business and setting up contact contracts, 2020 vendor relationships, etc. I love the community that you have both created. Why? Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank That's you. really cool. Yeah. I just, I, I was teaching. I got, I was like, you know, I'm always constantly, they're like, Allison, you're reinventing yourself. I'm like, I reinvent myself every month. I'm like, or every year. I'm like, what could, now what am I going to do? Now what am I going to do? I don't know. So I was teaching kitchen and bath. I have all these PowerPoints. 
and then everything went dead. So I was taking my PowerPoints and transferring them into teaching. So with what are some of the courses that you offer in your um, uh, academy? Okay. Yeah. So um, I did, I started the kitchen design Academy as sort of an offshoot of just wanting to give people more access to the, to the 2020 experience. And, you know, not everybody can make it to the physical classes when they're offered and not everybody can, can, can devote three days to the classes. So my goal was to come up with, with something that would be um, just, just quick wins that you could get in, in using 2020. And um, so the, the, the bulk of what's there are mostly skills, um, you know, rendering and lighting skills, um, doing multiple, multiple types of ceilings, like different types of vaulted ceilings. Um, just very basics of bringing SketchUp items into your, into your 2020. And, you know, there's, there's one that, that I just show very briefly, you know, it's not a SketchUp course by any stretch, but it's just showing what you can, how you can take something from the 3D warehouse, manipulate it to fit your design. That sort of thing. I, I could use some help with that because I've tried it and I've tried it and I've tried it and I get frustrated and I don't even look at it anymore. And I know that there's a way to use it, but I just don't know how to use it. So I would totally be interested in something like that because it's like, oh, import this into SketchUp. And I'm like, Pow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's another whole skill set that you need to learn, and that yes. you, know, you know I'm I'm a big proponent of just in time learning, and that's the type of courses that that I have is just in time learning. So um, probably the 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 biggest course, the the longest course that I have is um, so you you alluded to um, mm -hmm. the e design tribe platform earlier. Some people are buzzing about it, and all the different Facebook groups. Um, but it's, it's basically a, a better rendering engine of, so you get better, more realistic renders. Oh, those, that Jenna, Jenna's going to be a multimillionaire. <laughs> yeah. Have you had her on yet? No, I have to. She's yeah. a rock star. She's yeah, a she's rock star. Fantastic. And, the, and actually I belong to the interior design society and they had the virtual chapter, mm -hmm. uh, and they just had our annual, uh, event called Swatched, which was actually um, started here in the Long Island chapter by our president at the time, Bonnie Reich, and or Reich, I don't know how to, it's Bonnie, Bonnie did it, and uh, it's a great competition, so this year, IDS National took it out as a virtual, they took our local design platform and went virtual with it. And Jenna was, her e-design platform was featured in that. And mm -hmm. you should see the renderings it's that amazing. are coming out of this. It's like, whoa. Now I do my hand renderings. I always, I sketch by hand. I can't take all this time to make everything look in, in the computer, the way it looks, but not everybody has the skill that I have. So it's nice to give them, give, have this tool for people to do the rendering. So Jenna did this, the renderings are just incredible. And, I, and I'm like, and I'm struggling with SketchUp. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's, you know, that, so that's the, that's the bulk of, of that, the course. So I, what I did was I, I created a course that allows kitchen and bath designers who, you know, the, the e-design tribe was originally started for pure interior design and it's now starting to morph into something that is, is, can be used by uh, kitchen and bath designers as well. And, you know, you can, you can bring in, stuff from chief architect if that's your platform you can bring you can bring in cabinets that you do get from chief architect you can render that you can create them uh from scratch in sketchup and that's that's the path that some people take um or you can take them from 2020. uh you can you can design a complete kitchen in 2020 you don't have to worry about windows and doors um just to draw your walls put all your cabinets countertops sinks fa uh, not necessarily faucets but sinks um, and you know, you can do appliances and then you do have to go through SketchUp. So that's the one little thing about it is you do have to go through SketchUp in order to, um, to make it the correct format for the platform. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's also, um, not that time consuming, especially once you've done it a few times. Uh, and then it brings it, so you bring it through SketchUp and then into the platform. So my course just kind of 
talks about best practices when designing the 2020 kitchen and you know moldings and countertops and that sort of thing just kind of a, kind of a refresher in those things but you know you the the better the door style that you get from 2020 the better it looks in the platform in the end so um so that's what that's what that course does um so it's it's something that's becoming very popular i uh some stuff i've heard about some stuff i don't really know about but um uh jenna and i talk talk um on occasion and and there are some some kitchen and bath specific things that are happening with the platform over the next few months that are really exciting so um it's 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 fun to be involved in that and to to see that uh sort of bring in kitchen design and 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 embrace kitchen design yeah and um i love seeing all the different work i know there are designers that do like the furniture and the window treatments and this that and the other thing i myself didn't special ended up specializing in that so i really stick to the kitchen and the bathroom right i i own it as my specialty um i used to feel badly that i i was an interior designer and i only did kitchens and baths but it really is a very very technical and specialized Definitely. um yeah skill so that's what i use mm -hmm. uh, uh as my business i create i'm like okay yeah, allison you can own it you're a kitchen and a bath designer it's not a bad thing it's a good thing okay mm -hmm. all right feel better i think like we had mentioned earlier we all feel like we have imposter syndrome like am i they really want to listen to me oh, mm -hmm. they think i have something to say <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, it's it's uh it's like it's like anything, you know, you stay in your lane. That's what that's how Jenna put it to me when we started talking about, you know, developing ways that that 2020 users could bring their products into the platform, you know, she's like I don't do kitchen and bath. I stay in my lane. And that's that's a great way of approaching it. Um, you know, she makes no, you know, makes no bones about the fact that she is an interior designer first and foremost, and she leaves the kitchen design to the kitchen design experts. So it's a great yeah. collaboration. And what I um, want, what my desire is to teach the interior designers who want to take on these kitchen and bath products projects, but they don't really have the skills to, um, make sure that it's 100% a good design. Right. So um, is that, is somebody, is that your cat pop, popping in? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Are you kidding me? I had the, usually, usually the cats are all over down here. I feel like, and every time I walk into the kitchen, they all come running. I'm like, what am I? The food lady, everybody go away. <laughs> Same here. So this is interesting. I don't know if I'm still on live, but Allison had a uh, had the electricity flicker, so she lost her video. So um, I do a song and dance, but 
I really can't do that. So um, I'll just sit here until I think it's back. Yeah, thanks for letting me know that. Um, let's see. A good joke. I'm not really good at, uh, on the spot like this. Um, yeah, not nothing's coming to me. I didn't have anything prepared. Sorry. Um, all right. So here's a good one. I'll see if I can see if I can not butcher it. So there was a. Um, uh, this was out in Minnesota. There was a a uh, a Dutch gentleman, Dutch American gentleman, who uh, was in World War One, and he was addressing this ladies' group. And the uh, the ladies' group, uh, and he was to talk about his experience as a World War One flying ace. So he starts telling the story, and uh, he said, "Yeah, we were flying, and we were having some." dog fights and this fucker came in and he was shooting at me and the host of it stopped him and said ladies i just want to let you know that you know a, a fokker is a type of of an airplane uh you know that that the germans used in world war one and uh and the 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 dutch gentleman said yeah but this fokker was a messerschmitt so um that's one that i was just uh, thinking about um um Okay, Jason, I'm happy to. So um, I am, uh, I've been a, a designer, mostly retail, but uh, also had my own remodeling company for a short time. And um, I started designing because of 2020. I had been in the computer industry and a gentleman that I knew who was a contractor introduced me to it and said, you seem to like this software and having fun with it, would you like a job? So that was almost 23 years ago. So I'm, I'm now a kitchen designer because of 2020. Uh, so that's what I'm on talking about. So, um, that's really a, a, a big nutshell or a little nutshell. Thanks, Ryan. I hope I didn't uh, offend anybody. Uh, so anybody, I still design for clients. Am I just teaching now? Actually, Ryan, that's a good question. I do. Um, so I actually, I have a part-time showroom gig. Um, so I'm still selling, um, you know, retail in, in a retail environment, but I also do uh, freelance designing. I do a fair amount of freelance designing, uh, ranging from, you know, complete designs where I'm given the, the, the raw space to design um, to taking a hand-drawn design and putting it into 2020 and being able to get the renderings and the cabinet list and, um, you know, all of the, all of the things that go along with having it in 2020. So, um, so I'm still very involved in, in design. Um, I, I always will be, I, I really enjoy it. I especially enjoy 2020. Um, it's, you know, as, as you know, you're, you're in my, my Facebook group. So, you know, that's kind of a, kind of a passion of mine, but, uh, but yeah, I uh, I do still design. <laughs> okay, Allison just came in and said she's working on it still. So I will hang tight. If anybody has any questions about 2020, feel free. Um, And people get uh, get abandoned as guests. I wonder if that's ever happened to Ellen or anybody that uh, you have on as a guest. We suddenly become the host and the guest. Uh, 
Um, so actually, Jason, that's a good question. So that is a um, that is a rendering that I did uh, back at the end of last year. Uh, 2020 approached a few of the designers that they know. I, I happen to also be on a on a, an advisory council for 2020, and um, they asked us to render the completed spaces in the um, NKBA professional design competition. So this was this was the um, contemporary kitchen small winner from last year. So um, it was a, it was a fun challenge because we were basically reverse engineering a space that had already been designed and already had been had been completed. So we had pictures of the of the uh, the space as it had been completed and also all of the architectural drawings that were uh, in the packages. And it was a really top secret project. Uh, I got to do uh, so contemporary kitchen small, I got to do contemporary bath small and contemporary bath large. Uh, and it was very challenging and, and a whole lot of fun. Um, there were a couple of others of us that did it. Uh, Johnson, some of you might know, um, who's one of the one of the um, one of the best rendering artists out there, I, I believe. Um, and I'm not sure his thought of it really sure. And um, so yeah, so that's where that that's where that rendering came from. Okay, and Ryan, that was that was uh, rendered in 2020. Uh, you know, the thing with 2020 is it's it's uh, a lot of trial and error with the lighting. Am I back? back? Can you hear me? Colin. Uh, and now I can hardly hear you. How about now? Oh, that's better. Can you see me? I can see you. <laughs> the computer just went click and I was gone. Oh, here I am. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time hearing you. I can hardly hear you. Everybody else can hear you. You know what I'm going to do? Because this is what I can do. I'm just going to go out and come back in. Because why not? Life is like that. Is this any better? Oh, that's much better. Is it better? Okay. Yes. I have a soundboard that my microphone's plugged into, so I just turned it off and back on. That, oh, that okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you've been having a good old time talking, talking, <laughs> talking. Yeah. Yeah, I'm it like now. Poor Allison. I'm sure she's freaking out. Yes. I. Am. All of a sudden I'm sitting here, you know, we're having a thunderstorm going on and I'm sitting here going all of a sudden. Boop. So I had to reboot everything. Well, but I'm back now. Um, and uh, yeah, I've had a really great time talking to you more about the 2020. So um, what else have you been talking about while I was gone? I told a joke. You did? Um, I did, yeah. And, uh, um, and um, yeah, uh, Jason came in late. So I kind of brought him up to speed a little bit on my background. And, and uh, we, were talking about the, we were talking about the rendering that's behind me. So, mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, that was, the, that was about it. I, uh, I have such a hard time with the rendering. I do. And getting the lighting and it takes a lot of work to do this 2020. Uh, and certainly you need to have the, the, uh, tricks to the trade right. because it's quirky. Yeah, it definitely is. The lighting, even, even for somebody like me who's been using it for a really long time is still a bit of a bit of a trial and error. And, the key thing is you have to have a powerful computer in order to work 2020 well. Um, you know, you have to be able to, to be able to create your final render, which is that little HQ button down in the, that little orange button with the camera down in the, in the rendering window. And you have to be able to do trials of that. You know, if it's taking 10, 15 minutes to do those, it's very difficult to get to the final, what that looks like. Um, you know, most people think that that, that that rendering window is the end all, but it's, it's not, there's one more step 
you know, you get to that final HQ rendering and then you can, you can kind of manipulate things a little bit from there using, using the exposure, um, uh, feature, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's challenging. And that's been, that's been my most popular course by far, uh, is the, the lighting and rendering course, because it, it goes through what the, 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 the default lighting is in 2020, what they give you, um, what you can add within 2020. And then also, um, what you can add from outside of 2020, because the, um, any of the light fixtures that come in from the cloud mm -hmm. don't, gen don't generate light. So if you want a light that like a pendant from the cloud, the 2020 cloud and the SketchUp is the same way and you want to bring it in and you want it to light your space, it, it doesn't come in with a light source. So I know it's, uh, it's crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. And you know what? Lighting computer generated is very important, but also the lighting in real life is really important. Very true. People, don't always know the proper placement for pendants hanging over an island right. or uh you know the the difference between the k values 3000 k 2700 k and now with the led um bulbs lighting has changed completely completely yeah. in the industry um just because what was watts is now lumens. lumens yeah yeah and i took um i had some two light bulbs that were um equivalent to 60 watts or 800 lumens i put them in and my room was bright blue white so i took yeah. them out i took yeah. them out but uh, so lighting in general is really important and it really enhances the design. So right. when you're rendering in 2020, to not have any kind of lighting, it looks really flat right. and not realistic. Mm -hmm. Remember when you were able to put people in the 2020, do they still have that? They do actually in the cloud, they have some very realistic looking people now, not the creepy ones with the polygon faces that, that had no features. <laughs> Those were really wacky. Uh, no, they have some realistic looking ones now that, that, uh, and that's a big part of the, 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 um, the cloud, um, is they're growing that, that, you know, they have children in there now. They have a, a woman carrying a child. What's nice is you can, if you want to scale something, if you need to make sure about a clearance or something, you can actually put a real person in there, <clears throat> you know, yeah. with, with real, with real, um, dimensions and be able to, to figure out, you know, how, how like a door is going to open or, um, you know, something like that. So, so it really works out well and they're not creepy looking anymore. They're not creepy looking. <laughs> it's not the guy sitting and you had to like make him just fit everywhere. He's like the sitting guy. Remember the sitting, oh, guy? Yeah, the sitting guy and he just had his hands in his lap and his face was just this big polygon with no, no expressions. Yeah. <laughs> You're like floating the sitting man somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what do you see? Oh, we had talked briefly about uh, before uh, quickly the buzz going on now with the um, oh, NKPA yeah. and their certification. certification. Yeah. Now, I've had somebody ask me, Allison, do you know anything about it? I haven't heard a thing. Yeah. So, have you heard anything? Um, I have a couple of friends that, that, um, one in particular, Karen, who's actually watching us right now. Hi, Karen, um, was, uh, was informed that, um, she, so she's a CKBD certified kitchen and bath designer. Um, she was informed that for 90 days she could, um, she could just upgrade to CMKBD, um, from CK, some, from CKBD. Um, and that was at so no cost certified kitchen and bath designer to yep, certified, certified master, master kitchen, kitchen and, and bath designer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what their, their end game is in doing stuff like that. But, um, the other thing that I, that I had heard from Karen is that they're eliminating the AKBD, the associate kitchen and bath designer. Um, so what do they do? Um, what are they I, I believe they're upgrading them to CKBDs. Okay. So I think they're just, I think they're just making that the lowest tier is what it seems like. I, I, 
I wasn't there. I'm only getting this second hand. So I wasn't there for the announcement. They did do a, I think oh. it was a live, um, live webinar last week. I think it was. Oh, um, I missed that one. About it. Um, and, uh, and if, you know, Karen will probably put in the, uh, put in the, the comments if, uh, yeah. Anything hey, anything Karen, there. put it in the comments. Uh, Karen. Karen. She might be gone. Anyway. Um, that would be but good. Yeah, they're, they're, it seems like they're shifting. They're shifting them a little bit and um, allowing those who have been, I think, you know, it, 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 the impression that I get is that it's kind of become stale a little bit and people are just kind of be bopping along and doing their, their uh, CEUs and just kind of keeping it. And I think they want to see people just kind of starting to elevate to the next levels and uh, you know, try and get the next generation in um, to, to, uh, participate more in, in the certifications. In yeah, the I have to say that NKBA was much um, more present years ago than it is now. It's still there, but locally and nationally, they're having, um, oh yeah, AKBD will be gone. Yeah, there's a debate about this certification also. I know last week I had on Jan Rutgers from mm -hmm. Canada, and she is uh, one of the first, when they first started having the certified master kitchen and bath designer. And she had, um, had maintained that and was, was, had the, the designation for many years. Although recently she gave it up because of the amount of CEUs she needed to take. Um, any C, any, Karen says any AKBD has 30 days to upgrade to CKBD. So it's an upgrade. I wonder if it's right. a financial upgrade, Karen. Is it more money now that, since they're going to be an associate kitchen and bath designer to a certified kitchen and bath designer? I wonder if that's an upgrade, but a financial upgrade, because that was one of the reasons that Jan had let hers lapse. Um, I've been doing kitchen and bath for nearly 20 years. I do not have a certification. And you know what? I don't have a certification either. And I've never I. ever had a kitchen. I've never had a person ask me, are you certified? Me I either. And if people did say, are you, how, you know, how do you know about kitchen and bath? I would say I have an interior design degree from FIT. So just because I would say that would be enough to qualify and be everyone would just say, oh, okay. Because mm -hmm. it shows some, some um, form of education. I think some form of education is important, but not necessarily to become certified. I mean, I take the CEU classes just because I don't, I don't care about the, the points. I don't care. I care because I need to keep continuing my education right. as a professional because the things are constantly changing and growing and, and upgrading and, and going away and phasing out and coming in. So you need to be on top of your game all year long, right. whether um, uh, a CKD or just a, a regular practicing interior designers, kitchen and bath designer, uh, you need to become, you know, keep, educating yourself so uh here she's saying karen says the c the ckds can move to ckbd to cmkbd in 30 day wow yeah, within the 30 day period. letters there yeah. <laughs> well, we were talking about it earlier with uh, a coaching group that i do and we were talking about it's alphabet soup you know the more the more <laughs> i know one time one time i was so bad i was like you know what with the stupid letters the stupid letters yeah I said, you I, know what? i'm gonna make up my own letters and i yeah. did that i made my own business cards with my own letters i'm a a, a kick-ass kitchen and bath designer that's all i can say <laughs> yeah and you of course cheryl 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 keys has her has her um has her uh, well clendon and cheryl clendon and has her dgd damn good designer damn good designer right yeah. i like it um, you know I, I i hesitate i hesitate to to be too down on it because you know i applaud those that have the time the energy and the resources to do it um the main reason i never did it was because i never had the time i was too busy you know i was too busy working to 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 do it you know i was in a sales 
position most of the time. So, you know, you have to keep selling. Uh, and it was mo more a time constraint for me than anything else. But, you know, someone who's who's had the 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 time and the energy to do it, I applaud them. And I and I think that it's a it's a it's great to further yourself. Um, but it was just never for me. Yeah, it does take a lot of time and dedication to um, to learn all of the information. The volumes are like big stack of books to learn. Yeah, yeah and, it's a huge stack courses months and months of courses mm -hmm. um certainly i know i've studied in the past for the nas nat national national ncidq ncidq but that that was many years ago and they've since changed their format for um the ncidq and uh, I, I but i studied for it and studying for it really did help me um, because any kind of learning is, is help helpful Absolutely. to you. So Absolutely. whatever you could do. So I know I remember my building codes from that, that, uh, te that test. So, mm -hmm. um, I made the mistake of not taking the whole thing all at one time. I took it in bits and pieces, right. but everything is different nowadays. I mean, certainly CKD and CBD, I think where it matters more probably is for your employer when right. you're getting employed and you're going for a job maybe yeah. ck i'm a ckd and a cbd and now a ck cbd B, a b c yeah. D, <laughs> K, L, M, N, o, P. yeah i think i think also it depends on your circle where where you practice your design you know that you could be in if you know i would say most people who are in a re retail type situation even a higher end retail type situation where you're you know salary plus commission you're not going to have anybody asking about it and your employer is not going to really care that much but if you're doing strictly design and you're being paid for your designs and your knowledge more than you know you're still a good designer and i i hate to make the distinction but when you're designing retail uh, there are some fantastic retail designers whether you're in a home center or a standalone kitchen and bath showroom or whatever um it matters how good your designing is but I think that to somebody who is who is strictly being paid for their time to do the designing, then that might be it might be more important. Well, important to you know, because there are people that are you know paid thousands of dollars for their kitchen designs, um, you yeah. know. So so when somebody's plunking down thousands of dollars just for you know print out, printouts, basically, you know um then it's probably more important to them um but that's not where i've spent my career i've spent my career um you know in the trenches so to speak you mm -hmm. know selling product and and um you know designing as part of the as part of the sale i've been in retail ever since i was a teenager i started working in alexander's in Manhattan, uh, there is no more Alexander's. People would be like, Alexander's, what are you talking about? Well, it used to be a department store many years ago. And then I worked in Macy's Herald Square, and then I worked in Lord & Taylor. But I've also worked in the corporate work for menswear and, um, you know, uh, m merchandising and, and stuff like that. So... And I worked at Home Depot and I worked at Home Expo. But for the last, since 2002, so 18 years, I've been by myself. Mm -hmm. But I think that the retail experience is good for learning customer service Definitely. and how, in, how to deal with customers and um selling the the skill to sell because just because you're a good kitchen designer doesn't mean you can sell your job and right. just because you're a good interior designer doesn't mean you can sell your job so sales skills really comes into play and in that regard i'm i'm grateful for all of my retail training because you know, Lord and Taylor's has expectations of what their salespeople look like and say and do. The same thing with Macy's Herald Square and uh, any any retail store. It's all presentation, customer service. So having that background was very instrumental to me. And 
bringing it into my own company, the retail kind of just follows. But the skill to learn kitchen design, bathroom design, 2020 design, any specialty takes a lot of trial and error and right. risk taking and pushing the boundaries. Exactly. Yep. So when you're a, if you're a new designer just starting out in this field, there's so much to learn, so much to know that you will only improve your skills. I went from designing little basic apartment basement no frills kitchens to doing kitchens where just the cabinets were $120,000 because right. my design skill has improved to know is to do and to learn is to make a mistake and and exactly. grow through that experience. Mm -hmm. um, so that being said, there's always room for everybody and everything out there somewhere Absolutely. somewhere yep. so and rather than being um some people might take a back step and go like i don't want to be involved in all these other things where i really want to be involved i want to get to know more about your 2020 and your group and your teachable i want to get to know more about jenna and her e-tribe and i want to get to know more about uh jan and her other group i think it's it's fabulous that we have this ability nowadays to communicate like this and share our expertise to people where I wish this was around when I was starting my business mm -hmm. yeah. 20 years ago, you know, when I had my idea for my own business, it was like, just go out there and, and, and do, you know, so you had to seek everything out where now you have all these support groups, these on the internet, on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. It's just really incredible. So in, in addition to your 2020 power users group, what is it that you do on a daily basis for your, for your career? Um, so I, I've taken a step back from retail. I do have a, a, a part-time gig where I, I, um, support a, um, a cabinet showroom in a flooring store locally, um, just through a, a series of, of events, chain of events. I, I was introduced to them and I run that for them on a, on a part-time basis, but I do, um, I do a fair amount of freelance designing. I have a few designers that I work for regularly that, um, either I do what I call ghost designing, where I will take the entire, you know, I'll take the, the dimensions and the specifications and I will design it from the ground up and then go through, go through, uh, rendering just from the very beginning of laying it out through rendering. Um, so those are the ones that I have the most fun with. Those are the ones that I have the, the most creative, uh, the most creative license with. And, um, then I have some that, that will hand draw, uh, a complete floor plan and I will just uh, put it into 2020 to be able to give them neater, cleaner, uh, elevations and floor plans and render. Cause that's really the end result that everybody's looking for is, is the rendering. Um, so yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's, uh, and then there are some that, that I do just rendering for, they'll send me a complete 2020 design and I will tweak it. I'll get through the lighting and, and, you know, maybe put in some final, uh, decorative items and then, and then render it. So it, it varies. It's fun to see the client look at their rendering, <laughs> you know, when you present it to the client in person and they look and they go, Oh, look at my kitchen. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. Sometimes people will be like, they're afraid to do it because they're like, well, what if they, what if they say that's not my tile or that's not my wall color? You know, you just have to, it's all about managing expectations, right? You just have to let people know that this is, this is going to look pretty realistic, but it might not be exactly what yours is going to look like. And, you know, by setting that expectation, you can, you can sort of manage that 
uh, but still get the wow factor. So it's what's really good about the rendering is also as a designer, it's good for me to see it. Um, I mean, I can see it in my head, yeah. but when you put it in the computer and you can actually look at it, it can change your idea or influence where you're going to go with your design, the color scheme, the backsplash tile, you know, and it gives, if the client knows what kind of tile they want and you put that in there, they can really see whether they like it or not mm -hmm. like that. So it's a fabulous tool and it's powerful and getting better and better. Is there anything new with this version 12 that you think is better than um, the previous versions? Well, so version 12 was the first, um, and this is where it gets kind of nerdy. This is the, is the, is the uh, first 64 bit version of the software. It's been 32 bit up until yes. version 11. So that basically boils down to being able to take advantage of the RAM memory that's in the computer. Um, you could have 16 gigabytes of RAM memory on version on version 11, and it only can use the, the first four. No, no matter how much you have, it can only use the first four. So 64-bit opens it up to using the rest of the RAM, and that in a, in a power-hungry, you know, in a, in a resource-hungry program like 2020, that was a big deal to uh, to go to the 64-bit the version. So that's that's the number one thing that that came of it. Um, and the latest thing that that 2020 has has introduced is called 2020 Design Live. Um, yes. What is this? I haven't really checked it out. Yeah. So those that use 2020 know that that um, our we have our manufacturers that we work with. Their catalogs come to us in various ways. We either get emailed a link and then we go to the excuse me go to the website and download it and then we install it locally using the catalog manager. That's how we've done it since the very beginning. Um, but what they've done is they've they've over the years the cloud that they that they created a few years ago um they've they've morphed that into something that allows you to place cabinets from there as well so there are a number of um manufacturers on board with them i think 200 maybe um that they have um, done this live catalogs with and so now instead of downloading and installing a catalog you go to the cloud and your catalog is right there. Ah. Um, so, and that has a number of benefits, huge benefits. One is your pricing is always up to date. Your pricing, if they introduce a new door style, they can change it centrally and everybody gets the new door style. If they add or drop colors, they that just gets done automatically from a central location. You're not having to go and uninstall an old catalog and reinstall the new catalog and and install multiple versions. And that's another thing that if you have, you know, let's say you're using the Kemper line and you have, you know, the perimeter is in one color and the islands in another color. Right. Uh, you have you have two catalogs installed, like an A and right. a B. Um, right. with, the, with the live catalogs, that's eliminated. You don't need to do that anymore. You can just change those cabinets you just highlight them on the floor plan and you just change those to the different color or the different door style uh -huh. and then it gets separated into the appropriate place in the reports when you generate the reports so um it has a lot of benefits um wow that's really something i know i just uh, was installing i haven't tried messed around with this live at all and i keep seeing the training coming across my desk but i'm on my, on my, in my email but i i haven't had a a chance to really do it and i wasn't sure whether that 2020 live had anything to do with the the hardware that was installed in my computer no it's actually um it it doesn't make it any any less reliant on the current computer's um resources so you still need a pretty pretty powerful processor you still need you know a, a good graphics card all the stuff that you've always needed for 2020 um, because the, that stuff's all happening locally still. You're rendering and everything is still happening locally. Um, but you want to have a, a decent web connection um, because you um, once you start using those live catalogs and you become reliant on them, then you Boring. need to have internet. Boring. Oh, is it? Boring. New York, I don't know. We've had the hurricane. There are p still people with power out now. We're, now we're third. Yikes! What a year! What a year! Yeah, 
I know it's poor 2020. I know. <laughs> this is say poor 2020. And people, all the memes about how 2020 stinks and everything like that. And everybody <laughs> and the, in my group, people just keep posting, you know, little things that, that they see somewhere. I, I even posted one. Uh, you know, it said like what a, there's a local pool company that that puts little sayings on their thing, and it said if 2020 had a face, I'd punch it. And uh, <laughs> so, of course, longtime users of 2020 software feel the same way about it. So, you know, yeah. it's <laughs> it's a dual we, meaning. We like 2020 software. <laughs> yeah, it, as a you know, it, for all of its faults, it's a great tool, and that's what it is. It's a tool. It's a tool, it's a tool to help you sell a lot of cabinets. If you sell you know, three or more kitchens worth of cabinets a month, it's totally worth it. And your manufacturers are have 2020 catalogs, it's totally worth the investment, uh, because it will pay, it will pay dividends for sure. I, I use it primarily because it turns the cabinets into an order. It turns exactly, the yep. kitchen cabinet, my design into an order form. So right. and for that regard, it's it's a 100% necessary tool. Yeah. Definitely. And quoting. I mean, who likes to sit with a list of cabinets pouring over the catalog out of the catalog, writing each individual list price down and then, you know, adding Nobody. it all up and then yeah, and then doing, doing the, you know, the, the finishes and the plywood sides. And, you know, it's like it's all done for you. So it's it's great. It's the so, way to go. Way to go. Yeah. I just found out this morning um, I had offered to to the, the powers that be at 2020 um, that they're welcome to do a live in my Facebook group with the pugs to, um, to answer questions. So I just got the email back this morning that they, they want to do it in principle. We just need to figure out when and what. And so what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to have some, um, some questions submitted in advance and then, um, also take live questions during the, uh, the Facebook live. Well, you'll so, have to know. We'll have to uh, keep in touch, and I'll help promote that on my page and super, yeah. all that good stuff like that. We've got to keep on learning, keep on learning. Absolutely. Well, look at this. We are almost well. We're over to an hour because um, technical difficulties. Right. But I had a wonderful time chatting with you, Colin, and I want to say thanks for coming on my show. And I look forward to. Um, learning more about the 2020 through your group because i do learn all the time even though i've been an avid user for over 20 years i still you're still learning things always learning and thank you allison for having me this was a lot of fun oh, good. Uh, and um you know i've been a fan of yours for a while so keep up thank what you. you do um for designers and um and yeah thanks for having me my pleasure group we you know keep it together camaraderie <laughs> exactly better in numbers <laughs> that's right yep okay colin have a great day and all right, i will you. check out your stuff soon okay okay everybody. Care. thanks yeah, awesome. for watching Alrighty, thanks all bye-bye right,